Hey guys, welcome back to part 2 of our multi-part RenPy tutorial series. While my goal is to teach RenPy starting from beginning to end, our goal is to make a sim type game containing stat raising, uh, turn-based combat, energy management, and so on. In the previous video, if you stuck around for the review, you have all of these now in your knowledge pool, in your head, uh, hopefully. <laughs> And if you forget, that's that's okay. Um, I I have rambled and half dumped you with a bunch of things, um, and that's just the way it is when you're learning something brand new. As we move forward, you'll be understanding more, and I would have to talk less. Now, if you don't know what our format is, this these videos will consist of two parts. Part one will be me showing you guys the code, and you can code along with me. And then part two, I'll be explaining what we did and why we did what we did. Sometimes, um, if I forget the, if I remember the why part. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and open up script. Oh, I also want to let you guys know that f this is the plan for part two, and I won't be doing this in one video like I did in part one. That was a whole hour and some minutes. Um, instead, I'll be breaking down these into part 2.1, 2.2, .1, 2 um, I could probably fit these in 2.2 and 2.3, okay? Or something like that. In this episode, we will be taking a look at dialogue and character arguments because I want to treat my narrator as an inner thoughts. And if you remember, let's go back to RenPy docs. And we're going to go ahead and look for character. And we're going to dialogue and narration. By default, when RenPy built our project for us, all we got was this line, right? Define E equals Eileen and it never showed us what it could do until we check the documentations. And if you ever get tired of opening up your browser and going to the documentations, just open your launcher and hit documentation. This will open your browser for you and go to the documentations for you. Now that we've covered documentations, uh, these things are called arguments, okay? Um, I believe in the previous episode, I, I called them attributes. But anyways, we're going to be taking a look at expanding our narrator. So we have name, and the name is obviously the first thing we write in. Um, another way you could have wrote it is define mc equals character uh, name without quotes equals, and then with the quote part, mc name. Or in the case of Eileen, it was equivalent to e equals character Eileen, right? Or same thing here. Uh, what was it? Name equals Eileen. Same thing. It has to do with the order of when the character class was first made. Because anytime we don't specify who is speaking, our narrator speaks. And narrator is a special character. So we're going to keep the no nameness of narrator by simply quote, quote. This is an empty string. And then we're going to comma, space, what underscore prefix equals uh, quote. And we're going to leave that for now and go type another one. Uh, what underscore suffix equals as well. Set it to empty string for now. And if you remember last time, what we did with it was we made Alex, I believe, speak in quotes, right? And what this these two do is it basically adds whatever string you write into it and adds it to the end of of this of whoever's speaking. So hello, which is here. Welcome to the world. Uh, exclamation mark and it adds what suffix to it adds to the end see that 
And because of that, we can use something called text tag in RenPy. Ah, uh, so we're just gonna go curly bracket, just like how dictionaries are are done. Curly bracket and I. And we're gonna do the exact same thing on what suffix, but we're also gonna add a slash. Okay. This is an opening tag, and this is a closing tag. Some tags, such as italics, need a closing tag. Okay. So we open and we close. Otherwise, I'm, I'm going to show you this real quick. I, and then, uh, actually, let's do this. Let's apply it to our MC name. Okay. So because we applied the italics tag to narrator, the narrator will now always talk in italics. And because we didn't give a name to narrator, the narrator stays nameless, right? Okay. So we're going to move on to Bob. So my name is Bob. It's italicized. As you can see, my name is Bob and it ends there. I am zero stone strong is not italicized. If we forget that closing tag, it runs on. So make sure if you're using tags, uh, make sure close them. You close them. Some tags don't need to be closed and we'll explore that text and text here. Here we go. Styling and text tags. So we have bold and bold closes. You need to close bold italics. You need to close that and you can mix and match. So this, this sentence, for example, welcome to the world. I'm just going to paste that right in there and restart the game. You can mix and match, right? This is bold and italics. Um, there are more text tags. Uh, just take a look at this link here. Uh, just type in text and it's, it's the first one. Right, and then go to styling and text tags. These tags here, most of them, if not all, has an example of how to do it, of how they are done. So just go ahead and take a look if you want. Next, I want to touch on dialogue text tags real quick. And we can use these to enhance our, our dialogue. For example, no wait. Currently, now I don't know what you would use this for, but if you, you, you know, find a usage, go ahead. Um, and it's not just no wait, there's many as well. Uh, not that much, but they do exist, um, so, such as this. When we start the game, it says, welcome to the world. Now we have to left click. What is your name, right? No wait. This text tag is no wait, and it's a self-closing text tag, meaning we do not have to do this. Okay, just open it, and it closes by itself. So when we start from start, you will see that if we go to preference and just slow down your text speed, you'll see that it says welcome to the world. And then it continues on without me having to click. Okay. Um, if you want to pause to emphasize something like welcome, we can do P. Let me refresh that. Welcome. And it waits until I click to the world and and the way P works is it adds it to the next sentence if you don't want to do that you can use extend and the way extend works is exactly like suffix or the the what prefix and suffixes if you remember how they worked they just simply added adds to the end without spacing we have to manually enter that space okay so welcome space to the world i can do instead of p because it adds it to a new line and if it if you feel it breaks the immersion you can use extend instead we're gonna go welcome and delete this because we didn't end this string with a sentence here otherwise we would have two cent or spaces right because we're not ending a space there right adding the space here instead. Um, it doesn't matter which way you do it. They both work the same. So it, welcome. Same thing as the P tag. Welcome. I click. Now it adds it to this instead of the new line. 
So that's the power of extend. And when we get to image tags, I'll show you extend again and why it's so great. And extend is actually shown over in, I believe, dialog, maybe special characters. Okay, yes, extend right here. Um, you can feel free to play around with these. Um, again, the RenPy documentations most of the time gives you examples of how to do things. And it is great. Next up, let me take a look. We didn't talk about CPS. That is character per second. If I were to set my text speed to max, this will load my text. If I were to set it to nearly max, just a little bit below, um, my text is being written out word by word, but extremely fast. And this bar goes from zero or one, the very minimum number is one to 200. Uh, sorry, not 200. Maxed out is infinite. It just auto loads. Um, but next to the max out is 200 or maybe 199 with 200 being equivalent to um, auto instead. And if you want if you want to set, for example, a suspense scene, right? Uh, let's say I told you. Now we want to set the CPS equals, let's say, um, two character per second. Um, so CPS equals two character per second. So welcome to the world. So Right. So as you can see, it's rendering um, the two characters per second rather than what I have over here. Talks about, okay, pause is another one. You would mostly use it for whenever we reach. Uh, let me, let me give scene gray. Um, so if we were to do window hide and then pause. This is, uh, I don't know about most people, but I use it for whenever I'm trying to show scenery that I, but I still want the player to be able to control when, when they want to, um, stop viewing the scenery. I would click start, right? Welcome and ex extend to, well, to the world. And then I'm going to hide the window and pause. And it's just going to stop there until I click again. So there you have it. Um, before we talk fonts, I skipped something. I would like you to open a launcher and go to uh, options.rpy and search for CPS. You should find something called default preferences dot text underscore CPS. And by default, yours should be zero. And this is a persistent variable, by the way. So if I were to write zero here, and then I delete persistent, and then I launch the project, I go to preferences, it's maxed out. Now, if I were to write 100, again, it's out of 200, it should be in the middle. And then I'm gonna delete persistent one more time and open that. I'm right in the middle, right? So you can set this to whatever number you want. Um, when you build your game, when you release it, it will be by default zero if you don't change it. So make sure you change this if you don't want your players to see text instantly, if th you feel that breaks immersion from the story or something. Okay. So I'm going to set mine to 100. Whenever I finish the game and I build the game for a public release, um, it's going to be in the middle by default. Because when you first installed RenPy, it is set to zero, which is, if you read here, the default zero is infinite. So this is to set the speed, the default speed, when you first open your game for the entire game. And your players can change this if they feel like it. And the CPS way, if uh, CPS was two, for example, the CPS way was 
for just that sentence or not even sentence uh, just that within that tag again this affects your entire project until somebody changes it or deletes persistent and a persistent is another type of variable but one that stays even after you close the game and now we're going to talk about fonts the way fonts work is you can do a temporary font just like that and and that font um, currently if you go to gui.rpy and I want you to search for font and the way you search is control F okay search for font currently the default is deja vu sans let's say I want to change this font I'm gonna go ahead and look for fonts and I can uh, choose one of these let's say I'm gonna go with Bradley hand ITC I'm gonna go ahead and right click and copy and from there I'm gonna open this I'm gonna go uh, whoops not images go to game and then just paste it in there so we have and get this file name by the way um, again you want to see extension if you can't see that view show uh, file name extensions so I'm gonna just copy the whole thing, including the extensions, and paste it in here. So now that we, when we run, our fonts for everything, whoops, uh, for everything, let's say I wanna use Deja Vu Sans just for this, right? Deja Vu stands for this. Let's do that. So we're going to start welcome and to the world will be the default or not default, but the original um, font that we had. So there you go. These apply text tags apply to whatever you have it enclosed around or whatever line. If it's a self closing tag, it applies to the whole line. You have it around. Okay. Remember that. And things like the options and the GUI applies to the entire game. And now your play, unlike the text speed, the text character per second, where you can change this in the preferences, these guys, your players cannot change because look at this. Do you see that word? Define. And this word? Default, right? Remember that. Define versus default. Um, I didn't really do much that warrants an explanation in 2.0 or 2.1. How do people name their videos? But in the next episode, oh, okay, I can explain this. Um, def a default image for whenever I want to show scene, my cool uh, background. And it's just a default that's used when we ca it can't find the image that we want. And if you remember in the beginning, it was show Eileen happy. We got this little silhouette. And that's just a default for characters that don't exist or can't be found. Okay, so next episode, we will be doing a bit more. We'll be doing images, transition, and transform. And I'll be showing you guys linked images, okay? It's another argument we can pass to the character class. And I'll also introduce you guys to sprites and layered images and transitions that goes with backgrounds and transforms. And these can go with either backgrounds or sprites. Well, since I don't have anything else to explain in this, because we didn't do much this episode, I hope I'll see you guys in the next episode where we'll be tackling images, transition, and transform.